It's 10 o'clock. Now, Fox 35 News at 10. Anybody should be able to hand out any piece of paper they want to anyone they want anywhere on, uh, anywhere outside the courthouse. He was caught handing out jurors' rights pamphlets during the Casey Anthony trial. Now he is learning what happens when you do not follow the orders of Judge Belvin Perry, this man spending 151 days in jail. And he is only talking to Fox 35 tonight. During Casey's trial, you probably remember Judge Perry set up that free speech zone outside of the building. It's where activists could hand out pamphlets. Uh, but the man we're showing you here, he didn't listen. He passed them out in the restricted zone. So Judge Perry held him in contempt of court and today he was sent to jail for months. He's in the Orange County Jail tonight and that's where Fox 35 Jennifer Bisram caught up with him. Jen, what does he have to say about this sentence? Well, in our exclusive interview with Mark Schmitter, he tells us all he was doing was exercising his First Amendment right. Never did he think he'd end up behind bars for handing out flyers. 64-year-old Mark Schmitter in cuffs talking to us from the Orange County Jail tonight. Anybody should be able to hand out any piece of paper they want to anyone they want anywhere on uh anywhere outside the courthouse. Judge Belvin Perry sentenced Schmitter this morning to 151 days in jail for handing out pamphlets outside of the courthouse, outside of the free speech zone on June 29th during the Casey Anthony murder trial. It had nothing to do with Casey. It only has to do with uh, jury nullification. Judge Perry specifically ordered that no leaflets be distributed on court property during the Casey Anthony trial, except in free speech zones. Schmitter, a local roofing contractor, says he didn't care about the trial. He cared about his First Amendment right. He says his one-page flyers informed people about jurors' rights to find defendants not guilty if they disagreed with the law in question. The weak part of me is my soul for what I see is happening to our country. I'm a patriot. I'm still kind of numb about it. Schmitter says he plans to appeal the sentence. He's hoping that his attorney can help get him bonded out until they wait for the decision. Reporting to live from the Orange County Jail, Jennifer Bisram, Fox 35 News. Jen, thank you. Mr. Schmitter, by the way, has been handing out those pamphlets about jurors' rights outside the courthouse for about a year. Larry Walters is a First Amendment attorney here to shed more light on this Mark Schmitter situation. Larry, I, I got to ask you first off, what do you think of Judge Perry's sentence for this man? Well, just so everybody understands what happened here, a man was locked up in a cage for five months for distributing literature about juror rights in the courthouse square. Right, okay, I mean, but... That I, sounds like something that you'd hear about in communist well, Russia or China. Well, you know, you might say that for a normal case, but Larry, considering this was so high profile and considering the fact that Judge Perry had to lay out very clear restrictions, not only on this free speech zone, but on anyone who was in that courtroom just because of that attention, don't you understand why perhaps Judge Perry was a little angrier than a normal circumstance might permit? Well, you know, judges have an obligation to treat every individual fairly and not discriminate because there might be a, a particularly high profile case at issue. And so you know, the, first, the First Amendment protects all speech equally and, and I believe right. that this gentleman had the right to distribute the literature that he was distributing. Now there is a court order in place. The validity of the court order is uh, is questionable. It's, it's being challenged in various true, different places. And true or false though, he could have derailed a trial that would have cost the public, an enraged public at that, a whole lot more money. He could have caused a mistrial and also again, the rules were clearly laid out. I mean, the judge is within his rights to create those restrictions, isn't he? Well, certainly judges have the right to issue court orders and to try to keep decorum in their courtroom and so forth. But this court order went outside the courtroom to the courthouse grounds, and that's what makes it different. You're right. telling people well, what they can and cannot say outside of the courthouse. Yeah, I acknowledge it was different, but there's not even a part of you who thinks perhaps this may have been an exception given the, the level of attention alone and, and maybe even the physical security, the physical safety of the people involved. These jurors had to have been protected from most uh, people in circumstances, wouldn't you say? Well, the great thing about the First Amendment is that we don't make exceptions. Right. And uh, th that, that's what makes our country very different from any other. And, and I don't believe an exception was warranted in this case, but the judge's ruling was what it was. We right. have to respect the law, and until it's overturned on appeal, um, it, it's going to be 
be presumptively valid. Well, well, uh, all good points and all taken, just like a uh, good debate here. Larry Walters, thank you for coming in. And as far as the jurors who actually served on that trial, again, their names will be released in October. Fox 35 will keep you updated on everything regarding Casey Anthony's release from jail.